This is Patrice Wenling with Elsevier Global Medical News. I am at the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions, and I'm speaking with Dr. Fayez Zanad, who just presented data from the Emphasis trial showing that the use of Aplaronon reduced the risk of heart death and hospitalization among patients with mild heart failure by 37%. Doctor, does your data support expanding the population that should receive aldosterone antagonists? Uh, the answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, the uh, RALS trial has shown that aldosterone antagonists were effective in severe heart failure with left ventricular cytotic dysfunction. And you've got at the other end of the spectrum, myocardial infarction with heart failure, the FSA trial had shown the benefit of a player run. And that, therefore, we had this gap of mild heart failure uh, with, uh, again, uh, low ejection fraction. And this is exactly what uh, uh, are the results of emphasis the, which fill this gap. Uh, so uh, from now on, we have evidence that uh, throughout the continuum of left ventricular systolic dysfunction with mild post myocardial infarction and chronic severe, whatever the severity of the disease, aldosterone antagonists are effective into reducing mortality and morbidity. Can you describe the risk of your treatment on the risk of hyperkalemia? Yeah, well, the drug as expected, it's a potassium sparing uh, drug, but uh, uh, what we have uh, done in the trial, as much as the other trials, is to pick up a very low dose so that the mechanism of action is potentially other things than the diuretic potassium sparing, and the rate of hyperkalemia, although it was superior to placebo, was something we could tackle, and the patient who withdrew uh, from a study drug uh, because of hyperkalemia were in equal number in a pleuron and placebo group, so there was no excess drug discontinuation related to hyperkalemia and no excess hospitalization or death related to hyperkalemia. But this was in the strict condition of the trial with uh, a careful monitoring of potassium, with uh, enrolling only patient with uh, potassium below 5, no potassium sparing drugs, and a uh, kind of uh, uh, ejection for, uh, of EGFR about 30. Uh, why should a clinician use a Plaronon versus um, spirulone and actone, um, which in some countries is far cheaper? Uh, well, uh, of course, if you don't have a Plaronon, I'd rather have your patient under some kind of spirulactone. But if a Plaronon is available, uh, the data we are showing are with a Plaronon. So it's quite possible that we have a class effect. It's quite possible that spirulactone would provide the same benefit. But I don't know which dose of spirulactone I would recommend in order to achieve the same kind of result we have seen with emphasis in terms of uh, estimate of the size of benefit and also of safety. So it is safe to stick with the plenary if we really want to see the same kind of result we have seen in emphasis. But of course, if you don't have that, and I appreciate that in many countries they don't have a plenary on, uh, or the plenary is not uh, approved yet, uh, meanwhile, I would uh, encourage you to start with small doses of uh, spirulactone and increase doses until uh, a patient is safely with potassium, normal potassium. Less than half of patients in the United States are on um, an aldosterone. Um, could you, do you think your data will expand uh, that group now, and will it finally push this drug, this class of drugs, out there? Well, um, the bottom line, and actually the result we have shown now with the three trial, is that we have the si same kind of level of evidence than ACE inhibitors and beta blockers. We have three trials in three distinct groups of heart failure severity, which essentially have shown the same results, decrease in mortality, all-cause death, and decrease in morbidity, heart failure, and all-cause hospitalization. So this puts this class of drug on equal ground, and if any, the benefit ca comes on top of the benefit of converting enzyme inhibitors and beta blockers. So the bottom line is that all patients with low ejection fraction, provided they have normal or uh, EGFR above 30, they should be on the three kind of drug now. This is Patrice Wenling, live from the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions 2010.